as a documentary. The guy who never wanted to talk about himself now has to talk about himself. Barry Sanders. It's called Bye Bye Barry. Why did you do a documentary? Why did I do a documentary? Um, actually, the, the timing was right, Dan. Um, you know, I actually had a chance to talk about, a, you know, a lot of other people um, besides myself, um, you know, who, who, you know, were important to me. Um, the good folks at NFL Films and Prime Video, um, you know, really want to get behind this project. Um, and and uh, for me, it was time to or for me, you know, I felt like I had time to, to just, you know, really devote to it sit down and and kind of and kind of try to tell my story in, in in a certain format so so um i think all the right <clears throat> excuse me all the right things just kind of came together you know I, I wrote a book in 2023 i'm sorry in 2003 2004 you know a lot has happened since then um you know but i think to answer your question though i think just you know the timing was right but you never wanted to talk about yourself that's true. And I, and, and, you know, if, if, when you see the doc, you see that still, you know, dad does most of the talking. Um, <laughs> he, he always did. He always did. He always did. So he, so even in this documentary, my, my dad does most of the talking and, um, <laughs> you know, so, so, um, I just have a, I have a few parts here and there. <laughs> well, I remember when your dad said, you're no Jim Brown. <laughs> and and it and it really hit me. I'm like, your son's pretty good. And you liked that, didn't you? You liked that line from him, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I was like, uh, okay. And I realized you were never going to be, you know, your dad's favorite running back. Which is okay. You know, which is okay. But because even as a kid, you know, he would always talk about Jim Brown. Um, you know, and so and so from a very early age, I was I was programmed, you know. Uh, <laughs> but were you always so, trying to get your dad to finally say, you know, you're you're great or you're you're my favorite running? I don't know if you were seeking dad's approval on this thing. I don't think that ever even crossed my mind. Honestly, I I knew that I, I knew that I was at least one of his favorites. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn about you in this documentary? I mean, I don't I don't know that anything just really really stands out. Um, but other you know, people I mean, talking about you that maybe you didn't realize how they felt at the time or what they think now. Did you? Your kids? I didn't, hey, I didn't realize how much you, you got on my case at, um, you know, draft day. You were uh, terrible you, you, that day. You were, you were getting. <laughs> you were terrible. I go out there to cover the draft. You get selected. I can't find you. I'm out there specifically to interview you. And then I have to tell ESPN, they go, uh, I thought you're friends with Barry. I said, uh, so did I. I can't find him. <laughs> and then I'm like, I was kind of, I was mad at you. I was like, what are you doing here? Hey, look, I was, I was at home waiting for an important phone call, man. <laughs> <laughs> but once you got drafted. Oh, yeah, I, I don't even, I don't know. Once I got drafted, um, I'm, sure, I'm sure it took me a while to get out of the neighborhood. Oh, stop. <laughs> stop. Who did you think was going to draft you? <clears throat> no, I knew I knew that um where I had a good idea um that the Lions were going to draft me um just because of conversations that I had um with coach Ponce beforehand um where he he explained that yeah, if I'm, you know, if I'm available at at 3 or whatever, um then they they would pick me, which, you know, I mean, you never know until it actually happens. <clears throat> you never know until it actually happens. But uh, but that was my so that was sort of my expectation going into the draft. You lose that game, your last game. Your agent Peter Schaefer calls me and says you can't use this information. Barry is going to get on a plane. He's going to London, and he's going to retire. Why London? Why did you? need to get out of Detroit, get out of the country? Um, well, for me at the time, it, it just seemed like a really good idea. Um, I knew that there would be some fallout, uh, you know, and I had, I had been to London before, um, kind of knew how to get around there. Um, and so it was just kind of getting, getting away as far away from everything as possible, uh, but still a place where I was somewhat familiar with. 
um, you know, and so that was that was really really the thinking. It was you know, and and just to kind of I guess try to clear my head if that's the word or or um, you know just just to you know because there was a pretty good there was a pretty good fallout um, you know and and uh, and so that's kind of what I was thinking at that time. Did you love football? Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. I I, I absolutely. think I think you love basketball. I think you were great at football. And then when you don't win, then I mean, you walked away. No, I definitely love football. I mean, you know, maybe I, I like them equally or um I certainly enjoy playing basketball as well, you know, my in my free time and even <clears throat> even as a uh, player in the NFL, I play a lot of basketball, but but um but you know, they're certainly just different games, um, you know, in a lot of ways. But but I think I had great love for both of them. But I certainly love football and had a passion for it, um, you know. And, and I think, you know, it's different when you when you do it for a living, um, you know, and you do it as long as I did it. Um, you know, it, it, it does – it can become um, sort of um, – you know, a sort of a different sort of relationship with, with the game. But but no, I would definitely say I, I loved it um, and, and even still enjoy it to this day. I mentioned, I think it's in the documentary, that there's nobody I've ever covered who's been like Barry. And I remember when you called me and said you were getting a, a new car. And uh, do you remember this? And uh, you, you, you didn't want to get anything flashy, but you were worried this might be flashy. And you were getting a, uh, a Honda a four-door Accord. And you you said, is that too fancy? I go, no, nope, I think it's pretty good. You know, I don't think that's too flashy there. I, I don't remember that specific conversation, but um, I did. It, it was a, actually an Acura I owned, which is kind of a Honda. I, th- I think that's the car you're referring to. Yeah. Um, yeah. That um, might be a rich guy's Honda is the Acura. So, <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you could, plus, when I went into your house, you had a couch and a TV and nothing else. Oh yeah, I mean, I was. You, you're talking about you know days fresh out of college, so I was. You know, my decor was you know dressed up like the dorm room. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys, okay, here's something I know. You told me a long time ago that maybe if you could have played for the Raiders, you would have continued to play football. Remember saying that? I don't, you grew up I don't, a Raider fan. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly grew up a, a big Raiders fan. And um, I don't know once I got toward the end of my career. I don't know when I when I told you that, but that, that sounds like something I would have said maybe at the beginning or middle. But I don't I don't know that at the end of my career, I would have I would have uh, felt the same way. I mean, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't I mean, they went to a Super Bowl, I guess, a year or two after I retired. Um, You're the one that brought it up because this was towards the end of your career. Was, was it? Yeah. Was there any thought of you okay. playing elsewhere? At the at the end of your career, no, not not really. I, that's not that's not something I ever um, insisted on or had a conversation about um, with the team. Um, so it, it's not something I ever actually, actually put any energy towards. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, it's definitely um, I could I could hear myself making that statement, but but um, but no, it's not something I, ever, I, I actually you know tried to make happen. What do you think of the uh, current lines? Oh man, guys look good, man. Guys look good. Guys, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think this is what a lot of Detroit Lions fans have been hoping for and waiting for. Um, I think you know a lot of us really this season in particular knew that this team um, definitely had a chance uh, to win a division um, to really do what they've done um, and be one of the class, uh, one of the, one of the top teams in the in the NFC. Um, you know, you got your work cut out for you, obviously, with uh, with Philadelphia, you know, with the Niners, with the Cowboys, um, even if there's a few others in there, um, the Seahawks, wh- whoever else. But but certainly the Lions <coughs> are, um, are at the top of the class at this point. Um, you know, you look at the kind of football they're playing. Um, and I think it's, a, it's certainly a recipe for a success. You look at the quarterback play and. You know, the receivers, um, the running backs, um, the defense, you know, and you look at the strip, the strip um, sack, the end the game by Aiden Hutchinson um, on Sunday. 
you know, you win a game where you turn the ball over a lot. Um, you know, so I, th- I think this team is this team can go a long ways. Um, you know, if they stay healthy. You know, the, the, the kind of culture that Coach Campbell has instilled uh, kind of expectations. And then also the, you know, just the players that he's been able to to, to get in the building, um, you know, and and uh, this team, this team, I think, is just getting started. Uh, take me back to when Joe Montana's leaving San Francisco and he wanted to play for the Lions because he wanted to play on the same team as you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Coach Coach Fonts tells the story that, uh, you know, that Joe called him up um, and he was excited, obviously, uh, and said, you know, Joe said he wanted to come and play in Detroit. Um, this was obviously before he, as he was leaving the Niners and before he uh, signed with the Chiefs. Um, and uh, Coach, Coach Fonts took that word back to uh, the organization. And I guess, you know, they, they, they thought he, Joe Montana was too old or whatever at that point. And so oh, the deal didn't happen. Um, <clears throat> I feel like, I feel like, by the way, his last, one of his last games, regular season games with the Niners was against the Lions. And he, and he just tore us up. He torched us. Um, Montana did. Um, and, uh, but anyway, so obviously he goes on to the Chiefs and, and has a couple of great years there. But, uh, <laughs> wouldn't that have been something? Wow. Wouldn't that have been something? But yeah, anyway, it's, it's certainly just a great story um, that Coach Fonts told. And, and, um, and, you know, and, and so really, but, you know, the highlights though is that, you know, some teams make great decisions, you know, and on personnel and, and what have you. And you see why they have success and, and you see why others don't. 